Hello, my name is Travis Finnegan. I'm a sophomore here at the University of Houston. Uh, this is a little podcast I'm starting, uh, trying to use the media to get the word out that Jesus Christ is alive. And what a better time than to start here in the Christmas season. And yes, I said the word Christmas. Uh, I know it's kind of a, a taboo thing now to talk about Christmas, talk about religion. I actually had a professor tell me that they were informed, not a professor, a TA, I'm sorry, a TA uh, informed me that they were not allowed to talk about religion, couldn't speak about it, they could get in trouble for it, because I would basically tell him all this stuff and he would just kind of say, well, I would respond to you, but I can't, uh, which is disturbing to me. Um, you know, today we live in a very backward society. Uh, and one, a basic Christian teaching is that the devil sees things backwards. The way he operates is backwards. He doesn't th see things straight. He sees things upside down. The world is backwards to him. And if you look at some of the teachings that are out today, some of the things that are accepted, yet what is taboo, things are very, very backwards. Um, think about the teaching of relativism or pragmatism. Pragmatism is like what's practical. Uh, for example, there's a fetus. We don't call it a person. It doesn't have any rights. It can't practically do anything. Therefore, it's just a blob, so we kill it. Uh, which, in a sense, is kind of crazy because people who are pro-life are seen as anti-women. We don't support women's rights and their right to, to take care of their body as they like. Well, if we were to use that argument, then wouldn't we have the same argument to the to the small child that's within that woman, that living being in that woman that has a heartbeat. It has a heartbeat. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, take away pragmatism and see how that makes sense. And what pragmatism will tell you is basically, okay, it's not practical that we were to, uh, the, 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 it's not practical that the fetus would exist or that it lives, it can't defend itself, therefore we kill it. Or euthanasia, they just started that in Quebec. Um, it basically says, okay, Grandpa's sick, he's old, you know, he, he's hurting, it's not practical to keep him alive anymore, so we kill him. Uh, or relativism. For example, in my life, uh, many things were relative to me. I had different beliefs uh, that when my parents taught me, what was relative to them was, you know, get a good education, go to school, get your work done, you know, don't do drugs, don't drink, don't do this, do that. They had all these ideas that were relative to when they grew up. And so I didn't abide by these things because um, it was not relative to me. And even moving forward after that, we can, we, our generation, uh, whether you're a 90s kid, a 90s kid, right? That particular generation, we all know, we see a profound difference in when we were in middle school and the middle schoolers today because it's all relative. It's relative to when it is. It's relative to what society says is okay. It's uh, like we are told to be politically correct. This is a relative thing. It, no longer call someone a black person. You don't call me a white person. Uh, it, it's African American. It, it's Caucasian American. Well, in my opinion, last time I checked, we were all Americans. There was no African American or, or you know, Caucasian American. He was just an American. I'm an American. I'm white. That's just what I am. If I'm upset about it, I mean, I should, you know, probably get over it and stop being so sensitive. So we worry about things like political correctness or, or pro-life people are not for women. Uh, many politicians will say that I'm for women, I'm for abortion, therefore, or I'm for abortion, therefore I'm for women. And that's not true. Not all women believe that. How are you going to enforce your rights on someone who might not believe that? My mother isn't of that mindset, and you're saying that my mom, that you represent her when she doesn't believe that? Doesn't make sense. That's backwards. You can't speak behalf on everybody for what you believe. You can't speak on the behalf of everyone for just what you believe. Um, and th this is something that's very interesting to me. Prostitution is illegal, yet pornography is legal. We worry about being politically correct. Yet 25% of internet searches involve a man or a woman going online and viewing two people stripped down and have sex with each other. And that's relative. That's okay. That's accepted. 
Yet prostitution, where one person is paid for it, as opposed to an entire industry with actors being paid, directors, producers, uh, films, cinemas being paid, is illegal. Very backwards to me. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense that we're worried about being politically correct or what people do on their own time, but not what we put out to everyone. What a little child could go see. To be put in a situation that maybe their parents didn't know that something like that would happen. And so in this Christmas season, I urge us all, whether we're struggling with any type of pornography, any type of addiction, any type of issue, to repent. Because we live in the Bible Belt. We live in, we live in a part of the United States here in Texas where a lot of people have heard of Jesus. A whole lot of people. A lot of people heard the story that Jesus Christ came into this world, died for your sins and my sins, so that we don't have to go to the hellfire and so that we could go to heaven. That we don't have to suffer. That our joy may be complete. That he loves us. That he died for us. Many people have heard that. Very rare that people live by it. So in this Christmas season, in this preparation of uh, preparing the way, preparing the way for Jesus to come to this earth, this, this, this uh, remembrance of the man who came to this earth and changed history forever. Many of y'all may take a final this week or next week or y'all taken a test some point in your lifetime and you wrote a date on that page. You said it was January such and such such and such. Now that last part is A.D. There's one man I know that changed history so much that the entire timeline was made after him. There is one man I know that's healed more hearts than any doctor. That's changed more lives than any therapist. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is the true God. In this Christmas season, it's so vital for us as Christians or non-Christians to at least give Jesus a chance back into our lives. If you've never heard of Jesus, if you think he's a myth, I encourage you to do some scholarly studies. Tacitus, Josephus, are uh, one of them was a Jewish scholar, Jewish historian at the time of uh, Jesus, or around that time period, first century. And uh, so Tacitus, and, uh, Tacitus was Roman, Josephus was the Jew, Tacitus was a Roman, and they both alluded to a man dying on a cross by Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate condemning a man by the name of Jesus, condemning him to death. So if you were to add that into account with the Christian Gospels, you can find at least six eyewitness accounts of Jesus' death, historical evidence of his death. And if he died, therefore he lived. And this man, from the people who followed him, believed so much in their hearts that he was the son of God, that they went to death for him. And even still today, there are men and women who are dying for their Christian faith. The past 2,000 years has been littered with bloodshed for people who believe so deeply in their hearts that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins and was resurrected on the third day in fulfillment of the scriptures, scriptures that were written way before his time. Jesus Christ is a reality. He's living and he's breathing. So I encourage us all in this Christmas season to open your heart up to Jesus. Maybe you've never done this before. Maybe this is new to you. Well, what I have to tell you is for the next 30 days, just get up and pray this simple prayer every morning. Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Jesus, if you are there, reveal yourself to me and see what happens. See how your life will change. It changed my life. I used to get high every single day of my life. Every day. I had no hope for my future. I was in a desperate, borderline suicidal place. I did not want to go on. The God that did not exist did not help me. The force of the universe did not help me. It was a loving God who I've come to know over time. And I want to tell you now, there is nothing more meaningful in this life than to come to know Jesus. Because we all have this inherent belief. This comes from the talk of Ravi Zacharias. He said that it is as strange for one of us 
to come up to another person after not seeing them for many years, such as a small child, perhaps you had a cousin that you hadn't seen in 10 years, and he grew up, he shot up like a tree. And for us to say, my, how the time has flown. My, how things change so quickly. That would be as weird as a fish saying how wet the water is. Unless there was some belief within us for the eternal. Some deep desire down deep within us that there's something more than just this life. That there's something more than just this suffering here on earth than, than just a broken relationship after broken relationship after broken heart. We all need healing that Jesus offers. That's what I'm talking about. When people talk about those chains being broken, that freedom, that's Jesus Christ coming in and healing them, showing them their worth, showing them their value. He did it in my life. I know who I am today. I'm a child of the Most High God. Do you know who you are? Do you know what you were here for? Do you know what your purpose in life is? Jesus gives us the answers to all these deep philosophical questions that have been pondered since the beginning of man. And so now if you're watching this, I encourage you to say this small prayer with me. And if you're not ready yet, please do some research on his death, on his resurrection. It is unanimous across the board that this man lived and that this man died. And those who followed him believed in him so deeply that they were also willing to die a horrible death with them. St. John was the only apostle who was not killed, who was not murdered for simply what he believes. These men died for what they believe. Men in the Middle East, some are far off, blood is being spilled for what they believe, but they are not willing to renounce Jesus Christ crucified and resurrected because they know his love and they know his mercy and they know his compassion. So please, I encourage you now to say this one prayer with me. You can repeat after me. And if you're not there yet, at least the next 30 days, Jesus Christ, reveal yourself to me. Son of God, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. In the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I thank you now for this opportunity to come to know you to come and encounter your mercy. Jesus, I have been away from you for a long time and I'm ready to come back. Lord Jesus, fill my heart, flood my soul and baptize me with your spirit. Jesus, I repent of my sins and I seek you here now. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to tell you you've just done something powerful in your life. But it doesn't stop there. One prayer will not get you there. It is a narrow, it's a narrow passageway to heaven, and very few find it. And so what I encourage you to do now is for the next 30 days, or not even the next 30 days, for the rest of your life, get up every single morning, make it a priority, and say a quick prayer. Two minutes, five minutes, and just build from there up to one hour. Read the Bible every day. Find yourself a group of men who are sincerely seeking the Lord, or women, a group of women, and surround yourself with them. Get a prayer journal, write down thoughts, things that God might be trying to communicate to you, just things that have been reoccurring in your mind. And then you will come to know the glory that is Jesus Christ. And I thank y'all for joining me now. Y'all have a blessed Christmas. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad because he offers joy. He doesn't want slaves, he wants children and he wants his children to be happy. God bless you.